Chapter One of Adventures of Bindle. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Adventures of Bindle by Herbert Jenkins. Chapter One The Coming of the Lodger. Bang! even bindle was startled by the emphasis with which mrs bindle placed upon the supper-table a large pie-dish containing a savoury smelling stew anything wrong he inquired solicitously gazing at mrs bindle over the top of the evening paper wrong she cried is there anything right well there's beer and baity and the boys what's fightin began bindle suggestively don't talk to me mrs bindle banged a plate of stew in front of bindle to which he applied himself earnestly for some minutes the only sound was that occasioned by bindle's enjoyment of his supper as he proceeded to read the newspaper propped up in front of him you're nice company aren't you making a dive with the spoon at a potato which she transferred to her plate i might be on a desert island for all the company you are bindle gazed at mrs bindle over the small bone from which he was detaching the last vestiges of nutriment by means of his teeth he replaced the bone on the edge of his plate in silence you think of nothing but your stomach mrs bindle continued angrily look at you now well now ain't you funny remarked bindle as he replaced his glass upon the table if i'm chatty you say hold your tongue if i ain't chatty you ask why i ain't a makin love to you after a moment's silence he continued meditatively i kept rabbits silkworms and a special kind of performin flea and i seem to get to understand em all but women well you may search me and he pushed his plate from him as a sign of repletion mrs bindle rose from the table bindle watched her curiously it was never wise to inquire what course was to follow i answered an advertisement to-day she announced as she banged an apple pie on the table with difficulty bindle withdrew his interest from the pie to mrs bindle's statement you don't say so he remarked pleasantly and about time i should think with food getting up as it is she continued as she hacked out a large v-shaped piece of pie crust which she transferred to a plate and proceeded to dab apple beside it bindle regarded her uncomprehendingly in the gospel sentinel she vouchsafed the information grudgingly and rising she fetched a paper from the dresser and threw it down in front of bindle indicating a particular part of the page with a vicious stab of her forefinger bindle picked up the paper the spot indicated was the column headed wanted he read christian home wanted by a single gentleman chapel-goer temperance quiet musical home comforts good cooking moderate terms references given and required apply lonely care of the gospel sentinel bindle looked up from the paper at mrs bindle well she challenged he turned once more to the paper and re-read the advertisement with great deliberation forgetful of his fast cooling plate well remarked bindle judicially this is a christian ome right enough plenty of soap and water and an em or two thrown in so as you won't notice the smell cookin's good likewise and as for ome comforts if we ain't got em who has there's sweepin and scrubbin and mats everywhere mustn't smoke in the parlor unless you happen to be the chimney and of course there's you the biggest ome comfort of all yes mrs b he concluded shaking his head with gloomy conviction we got enough ome comforts to start a colony i'm always trippin over em eat your pie snapped mrs bindle perhaps it'll stop your mouth bindle applied himself to the apple pie with obvious relish glancing from time to time at the gospel sentinel well demanded mrs bindle once more i was just wonderin said bindle what about i was just wonderin continued bindle why we want a lodger us like two lovebirds a singin and a cooin all day long what about the housekeeping demanded mrs bindle aggressively the housekeeping inquired bindle innocently 
yes the housekeeping repeated mrs bindle with rising wrath as if bindle were directly responsible the housekeeping i said and food going up like like l suggested bindle helpfully how am i to make both ends meet she demanded i suppose they must meet he inquired tentatively don't be a fool bindle was the response i ain't going to be a fool with that there lodger hangin about retorted bindle if he starts a playin with my own comfort he'll find his jaw closed for alterations i'm a desperate feller where my art's concerned there was poor old orus only the other day just back from the front he was bindle paused and shook his head mournfully horus who demanded mrs bindle orus gaze replied bindle nice cove too he is ullo orus i calls out when i see him just a comin from the station with all his kit cheerio says he the missus'll be glad to see you i says she don't know i'm ere yet he says didn't you send her a telegram i asks telegram says he not arf why not lord ain't you a mug joe says he you don't catch me a trustin women i got my own way i have says he mysterious like what is it i asks him well i goes ome says he er thinkin me at the front rattles me key in the front door then i nips round to the back and catches the blighter every time i won't listen to your disgusting stories said mrs bindle angrily disgustin said bindle incredulously you've a lewd mind bindle well well remarked bindle it's something to have a mind at all it's about the only thing they don't tax as war profits you'll have to be careful when the lodger comes there was a note of grim warning in mrs bindle's voice lodgers ain't to be trusted said bindle oracularly if you expects em to pinch your money box arf they goes with your missus and if you're open it'll be your missus blowed if they don't pouch the canary no he concluded with conviction lodgers ain't to be depended on that's right go on but you're not hurting me snapped mrs bindle rising to clear away you always oppose me perhaps you'll tell me how i'm to feed you on your wages she stood her hands on her hips looking down upon bindle with challenge in her eye my wages why i'm gettin never mind what you're getting interrupted mrs bindle you eat all you get and more and you know it look at the price of food and me waiting in queues half the day to get it for you you're not worth it she concluded with conviction i ain't mrs b replied bindle good-humouredly i ain't worth half the love what woman have ad for me mrs bindle sniffed you always was fond of your food she continued as if reluctant to let slip a topic so incontrovertible i was mrs b agreed bindle and what is more i probably always shall be as long as you go on cooking it what i shall do when you go orf with the lodger i don't know and bindle wagged his head from side to side in utter despondency mrs bindle made an unprovoked attack upon the kitchen fire well said bindle after a pause if it's rations or a lodger i suppose it's got to be a lodger and he drew a deep sigh of resignation he turned once more to the gospel sentinel musical too ain't he he continued i wonder what he plays the jew's arp or a drum seems a rare sport he does chapel goer temperance quiet musical fond of home comforts good cookin and don't want to pay much regular blood i shall call him he's coming to-night to see the place mrs bindle announced and don't you go and make me feel ashamed you'd better keep out of the room how could you cried bindle reproachfully as he proceeded to light his pipe me don't do that snapped mrs bindle bindle regarded her over the flaming match with eyebrows raised interrogatingly perhaps he doesn't smoke she explained but i ain't going to give up tobacco said bindle with decision holy angels me with a wife and a lodger and no pipe he looked about him as if in search of sympathy then turning to mrs bindle he demanded you mean to say i got to give up smoking for a lodger 
Indignation had smoothed out the wrinkles round his eyes, and stilled the twitchings at the corners of his mouth. "'It doesn't matter after he's here,' Mrs. Bindle responded sagely. Slowly the set expression vanished from Bindle's face. The wrinkles and twitches returned, and he breathed a sigh of elaborate relief. "'Mrs. B.' he said admiringly. "'You ain't lived for nineteen years with your awful wedded husband, lovin', honourin', and obeyin' him, I don't think, without learnin' a thing or two. he winked knowingly. "'Yes,' he continued, apparently addressing a fly upon the ceiling, "'we'll catch our lodger first and smoke him afterwards, all of which is good business. Funny how religion never seems to make you too simple to—' Bindle was interrupted by a knocking at the outer door. Mrs. Bindle performed a series of movements with amazing celerity. She removed and folded her kitchen apron, placed it swiftly in the dresser drawer, gave a hasty glance in the looking-glass over the mantelpiece to assure herself that all was well with her personal appearance, and finally slipped into the parlour to light the gas. She was out again in a second, and, as she passed into the passage leading to the outer door, she threw back at Bindle the one word, Remember! pregnant with as much meaning as that uttered two and a half centuries before in Whitehall. "'Nippy on her feet is Mrs. B.' muttered Bindle admiringly, as he listened intently to the murmur of voices and the sound of footsteps in the passage. Presently the parlour door closed, and then silence. Bindle fidgeted about the kitchen. He was curious as to what was taking place in the parlour, and, above all, what manner of man the prospective lodger would turn out to be. He picked up the evening paper, endeavouring to read what the Austrian Prime Minister thought of the prospects of peace, what Berlin thought of the Austrian Prime Minister, what the Kaiser thought of the Almighty, and what the Almighty was permitted to think of the Kaiser. But international politics and the war had lost their interest. Bindle was conscious that he was on the eve of a crisis in his home life. "'How the injure-rubber ostrich can a cove read when he ain't smokin'? he muttered discontentedly as he paused to listen. He had detected a movement in the parlour. Yes, the door had been opened. There was again the murmur of voices, steps along the passage, and finally the sound of the outer door closing. A moment later Mrs. Bindle entered. Bindle looked up expectantly, but remembering that curiosity was the last thing calculated to open Mrs. Bindle's set lips, he became engrossed in his paper. Mrs. Bindle seated herself opposite to him, and, smoothing her skirt, folded her hands on her supper, as Bindle had once expressed it. "'He's coming Monday,' she proclaimed, with an air of one announcing an event of grave national importance. "'Does he smoke?' inquired Bindle anxiously. "'He does not,' replied Mrs. Bindle, with undisguised satisfaction. "'But,' she added, as if claiming for some hero the virtue of self-abnegation, he doesn't object to it in moderation she added significantly well that's something admitted bindle as he proceeded to light his long neglected pipe there was poor old alf garley what beer made sick but he used to like to see other coves with a skinful don't be disgusting bindle snapped mrs bindle piqued that his apparent lack of interest in the lodger gave her no opportunity of imparting the information she was bursting to divulge what's disgustin demanded bindle him watching men make beasts of themselves retorted mrs bindle them makin beasts of themselves bindle exclaimed if you'd ever seen alf after half a pint of beer you wouldn't have said it was them what was makin beasts of mr hearty will like him interrupted mrs bindle unable longer to keep off the subject of the lodger Mr. Hearty had married Mrs. Bindle's sister and had become a prosperous greengrocer. "'Hearty like Alf! Old me, Horace!' cried Bindle. "'I mean Mr. Gupperduck,' said Mrs. Bindle with dignity. "'Mr. Waterduck?' Bindle cried, his interest too evident for concealment. "'Mr. Josiah Gupperduck,' repeated Mrs. Bindle with unction. "'That is his name!' Bindle whistled a long, low sound of joy and wonder. "'Well, I'm damned!' he exclaimed. "'Don't you swear before me, Joseph Bindle,' cried Mrs. Bindle angrily, "'for I won't stand it!' "'Gupperduck,' repeated Bindle, with obvious enjoyment, "'sounds like a patent Macintosh!' 
oh you may laugh said mrs bindle drawing her lips you may laugh but he'll be company for me he plays too she could no longer restrain her desire to tell all she knew about mr gupperduck is it the jews arp or the drum wot he plays inquired bindle presently it's neither replied mrs bindle it's the accordion bindle groaned mentally he visualized mr hardy's hymn singing sunday evenings plus mr gupperduck and his accordion well well he remarked philosophically i suppose we're none of us perfect he's a very good man and he's going to join our chapel announced mrs bindle with satisfaction bindle groaned again arty and mrs b and old buttercup he muttered joe bindle you'll be on the safe bench before you know where you are and rising he went out much to the disappointment of mrs bindle who was prepared to talk lodger until bedtime to bindle the lodger was something between a convention and an institution he was a being around whom a vast tradition had accumulated in conjunction with the mother-in-law he was on the halls the source from which all humour flowed his red nose umbrella and bloater were ageless he was a sower of discord in other men's houses waxing fat on the produce of a stranger's labour he would as cheerfully go off with his landlord's wife for ever as with the unfortunate man's shirt or trousers for a few hours thus losing him a day's work nemesis seemed powerless to dog the footsteps of the lodger retribution was incapable of tracking him down he was voracious of appetite prolific of explanation eternally on the brink of affluence forever in the slough of debt he was a prince of parasites a master of optimism a model of obtuseness he could achieve more and at less cost to himself than a gypsy he was as ancient as the hills as genial as the sunshine as cheerful as an expectant relative at the death bedside of wealth he was unthinkable unforgettable unejectable living on all men for all time nations rose and declined kings came and went emperors soared and fell but the lodger stayed on bindle looked forward to the coming of mr gupperduck with keen interest since the evening of his call mrs bindle had become uncommunicative what's he do bindle had inquired he's engaged upon the lord's work she had replied and proved unamenable to all further interrogation on the monday bindle was home from work early only to be informed that mr gupperduck would not arrive until eight o'clock now you just be careful what you say bindle mrs bindle had admonished him as she busied herself with innumerable saucepans upon the stove don't you be nervous mrs b he reassured her sniffing the savoury air with keen anticipation there ain't nothing wrong with my conversation once i gets goin what about drink he demanded as he unhooked from the dresser the blue and white jug with the crimson butterfly just beneath the spout he's temperance replied mrs bindle with unction well i ope he looks it was bindle's comment as he went out when time permitted bindle's method of fetching the supper beer was what he described as aff inside and aff in the jug which meant that he spent half an hour in pleasant converse with congenial spirits at the yellow ostrich when he returned to fenton street mr gupperduck had arrived depositing the jug upon the table with deliberation bindle turned to welcome the guest pleased to see you mr gutter he paused the name had momentarily escaped him gupperduck mr josiah gupperduck volunteered the lodger it ain't easy is it said bindle cheerfully must have caused you a rare lot of trouble a name like that mr gupperduck eyed him disapprovingly he was a small thin man with a humourless cast of face large round spectacles three distinct wisps of overworked hair that failed to conceal his baldness a short brown beard that seemed to stand out straight from his chin and a red nose his upper lip was bare save for a three days growth of bristles looks like a owl wot's been on the drink was bindle's mental comment you can read his old history in the end of his nose been a pleasant day remarked bindle conversationally quite forgetful that it had rained continuously since early morning pleasant interrogated mr gupperduck bindle suddenly remembered 
for the ducks i mean he said then with inspiration added not for gupper ducks bindle admonished mrs bindle you forget yourself oh don't mind me mr g said bindle there ain't no real arm in me bindle proceeded to put an ed on the beer this he did by pouring it into the glass from a distance of fully a yard with astonishing accuracy catching mr gupperduck's eye he winked can't get an ed like that on lemonade he remarked cheerfully the atmosphere was constrained mr gupperduck was tired and hungry bindle was hungry without being tired and mrs bindle was grimly prepared for the worst well here's long legs to the baby cried bindle raising his glass and drinking thirstily mrs bindle cast a swift glance at mr gupperduck who gazed at bindle wonderingly over the top of the spoon he was raising to his mouth the meal continued in silence bindle was hypnotized by mr gupperduck's ears they stood out from each side of his head like signboards as if determined that nothing should escape them after a time mr gupperduck began to show signs that the first ardour of his appetite had been appeased if it ain't a rude question mister began bindle might i ask what's your job i'm in the service of the lord replied mr gupperduck in a harsh tone trade union wages queried bindle with assumed innocence bindle admonished mrs bindle behave yourself i am a sower of the seed said mr gupperduck pompously and with evident self-satisfaction well personally myself said bindle i ain't much belief in them allotments you spend all your time in diggin and gettin yourself in an ell of a mess and then somebody comes along and pinches your bloomin vegetables i refer to the spiritual seed said mr gupperduck i preach the word of god the peace that passeth all understanding bindle groaned inwardly and silence fell once more over the board mrs bindle said mr gupperduck at length you have given me a most excellent supper mrs bindle's lips became slightly visible the lord shall feed his flock remarked mr gupperduck apropos of nothing in particular and he keeps a few little pickings for his gupperducks flashed bindle bindle mrs bindle glanced across at mr gupperduck the two then entered into a conversation upon the ways of the lord about which they both seemed to possess vast stores of the most intimate information from their conversation bindle gathered that mr gupperduck was a lecturer in the parks mission halls and the like being connected with the society for the suppression of atheism and what are the tenets of your spiritual faith mr bindle mr gupperduck suddenly turned and addressed himself to bindle what's my what inquired bindle with corrugated forehead he's a blasphemer mr gupperduck i'm sorry to say volunteered mrs bindle mr gupperduck regarded bindle as if mrs bindle had said he was the missing link mr bindle he said earnestly have you ever thought of the other world thought of the other world bindle exclaimed if you lived with mrs b you wouldn't have much time for thinking of anything else she's as dotty about evan as an inn over a shop egg and as for arty that's my brother-in-law well arty gets my goat when he starts about evan and angels i fear you speak lightly of serious things mr bindle said mr gupperduck harshly think of when the trumpet shall sound incorruptible and think of when the all-clear bugle sounds in fulham responded bindle mr gupperduck looked at mrs bindle in horror i'm a special you know explained bindle i got to be on the listen for that bugle after the air raids my don't they just nip back into their little beds again feelin how brave they've all been mr gupperduck seemed to come to the conclusion that bindle was hopeless for the next half hour he devoted himself to conversing with mrs bindle about the message he was engaged in delivering you plays don't you inquired bindle as mr gupperduck rose i'm very fond of my accordion replied mr gupperduck i suppose you couldn't give us a tune ventured bindle not to-night mr bindle said mr gupperduck i have a lot to do to-morrow then as if suddenly remembering his pose he added there is the lord's work to be done on the morrow and his servant hath need of rest bindle stared mrs bindle regarded her lodger with admiration tinctured with awe 
when mr gupperduck could not call to mind an appropriate passage from the scriptures he invented one i'm sorry remarked bindle as mr gupperduck moved towards the door i wanted you to play a thing i picked up at the granville the other night it was a rare good song if you squeeze me tighter jimmy i shall scream i can whistle it if but mr gupperduck was gone then the storm burst you're a disgrace to any respectable home joseph bindle that you are mrs bindle broke out as soon as mr gupperduck's bedroom door was heard to close me inquired bindle in obvious surprise what must he think of us demanded mrs bindle you with your lewd and blasphemous talk what have i done now inquired bindle in an injured tone talking about baby's legs and and oh you make me ashamed you do mrs bindle proceeded to bang away the supper things steady on admonished bindle or you'll have the duck out of bed what must he think of me with such an husband mrs bindle's h's were dropping from her under the stress of her pent-up feelings well speaking for myself said bindle relighting his pipe which had gone out he most likely thinks you're an uncommon lucky woman you see lizzie bindle continued evenly you're fickle that's what's the matter with you mrs bindle paused in the act of pouring water over the piled-up dishes in the sink as soon as you sees another cove what takes your fancy you sort of loses your taste for your own husband bindle seated himself at the table and spread out the evening paper first it's artie then it's gupperduck now i ask you mrs b what would you think if i was to say we must have a woman lodger now i ask you that's quite different cried mrs bindle angrily mr gupperduck is a sort o prayer og in trousers judgin from his talk interrupted bindle me and him ain't going to fall out though you did give him an extra dose of gravy at the same time we ain't going to fall in love with each other if he pays his rent and behaves quiet like then i haven't nothing to say for what's an ome without a lodger but it's got to be ands orf my missus see bindle you're a dirty-minded beast retorted mrs bindle snapping her jaws viciously that may or may not be replied bindle as he walked towards the door on his way to bed but if you and him start giving each other the glad eye then i'm hurt in my private feelings and when i'm hurt in my private feelings i'm hot stuff and he winked gravely at the text on the kitchen wall containing some home truths for the transgressor end of chapter one of adventures of bindle read by don w jenkins rancho san diego california shaggybark.blogspot.com